Today, we're talking about capturing the rain. This is a rain barrel workshop. We'll go through the steps to, uh, to, to make a rain barrel and some of the uses for rain barrels and try to answer any questions that you, that you might have. I'm Stephen Kettner. I'm Vice President and Conservation Chair for West Lucia Audubon. The topic of this presentation is rainwater harvesting, the accumulation and storage of rainwater for later use. Once you've captured the rainwater, what can you do with it? You can irrigate plants with it. That's the main use. You can mix fertilizer with the water and use that for, to fertilize your plants. You can wash your car with it. You can clean your tools with it. The one thing you can't do is you can't drink it. It does not meet the standards for, uh, for drinking water. So what are the benefits of harvesting rainwater? One, it reduces our dependence on groundwater our drinking water supply for uh, for long irrigation. Uh, it also reduces erosion and storm runoff by holding the water back on our property uh, for use at a later time, uh, as opposed to it running off for uh, during a storm. When you talk about harvesting rainwater, how significant is that? How much water can you uh, can you actually uh, harvest and and, uh, and and use? If you look at a, a one inch of rain uh, on a thousand square foot roof, that'll yield 625 gallons. With the average of 50 inches of rainfall a year in Florida, that means you could you could collect over 30,000 gallons of water a year from just that thousand square foot of roof. That to me is a very significant amount of water. So how do we go about this? How do we harvest rainwater? To start with, the thing we're going to talk about today is building a rain barrel. This is a good first step. So what is a rain barrel? It's a device that's used to collect rainwater mainly for the purpose of landscape irrigation. So first thing to do is you've got to find a barrel, a suitable barrel. They need to be plastic. They cannot be metal because they'll rust. Um, come in a variety of different types and different sizes. Um, barrels I normally use are, uh, are a solid top uh, 55 or 30 gallon barrel. Uh, they're the ones that are most readily available. You can find those pretty easily. Um, the one with the screw on top is more difficult to find and is more expensive. They're more popular uh, and they normally are going to come in, in 55 gallon. Uh, that's the one that you see here and uh, it's actually in my, uh, in my yard. start with, we need to remove the, uh, the top of the barrel. I do that by uh, building a pilot hole in the, in the top. I then take my jigsaw with a coarse tooth blade and I just cut around the, the top of the barrel to, uh, to remove that top. Uh, in the end, you see in the lower uh, right hand corner, you see what that barrel looks like with the top, uh, with the top removed. Once you have the top cut out, you've got to make a hole for the spigot to go in. Um, in this case, the, the person doing this one is using a, a, a paddle type, uh, type bit, it's flat. Uh, I don't recommend those, but they're readily available and common. They're hard to get a perfectly round hole with, and I'll, you'll see in a moment why that's important. If you use a paddle drill, that hole's not gonna be perfectly round. When you put the spigot in, you're going to have to seal it in with, uh, with PVC cement, and you can see that around the uh, around the spigot here, or you might get some leaks around the around the edge, or you could put some kind of a washer in uh, again to try and seal that to make a good tight seal. Here's what it looks like on the inside. You just put that locking nut on the inside to uh, to hold the uh, the spigot on. I do it differently. I use a a 15 16 um, inch hole saw. Um, and I use a, a, a three-quarter inch uh, uh, tap and a, and a ratchet. And so what I do is I drill that hole. It's perfectly round because I, the, uh, the hole saw makes a perfectly round hole. And then I use the, uh, the tap, which you can buy at, at any hardware store. You can buy it from, from Amazon to put the threads on. You see how nicely those threads are done? Makes it much, much easier to put that spigot in. Uh, it, screws, uh, it screws right in and uh, seals up. Should it ever leak, and I've never had one leak, but should it ever leak, you can always back it off a little bit and use that uh, uh, PVC cement on it. But I have not had that 
uh, that problem. This is my preferred hose bib. It's a three quarter inch uh, brass body. It's a no kink style, which means it's at an angle. It makes it a lot easier to get the uh, garden hose on and off the bib if you're going to be using garden hose. And then you have a finished rain barrel. It's just that simple. When I get done, I put um, uh, standard screen wire on top of it. That keeps the uh, uh, insects and bugs and leaves out of your barrel. Um, you then uh, I use a I use a, a, a bungee cord, about a 40 inch bungee, bungee cord to go around the top, and you see this pegging down the bottom. One interesting thing. Uh, the, the people I've had who've had trouble with these things call me up and they say, uh, hey, this rainbow is not holding water. And the first thing I ask them is, did they close the valve, uh, the spigot on the, on, the, um, on the barrel? And virtually every time they go, oh, we're sorry, we forgot to do that. Uh, it's amazing. It will not hold water if you leave the valve open. But this is what the finished barrel looks like. 30 gallons look just the same. They're just smaller. But, so we're all done. Well, not quite. We got to set the we got to set the rain barrel up. Um, if you'll notice, the, the the spigot is very close to the bottom. Uh, some people you will see will put the spigot almost in the middle of the barrel. If you do that, you lose a third to a half of the storage. Uh, but putting it down at the bottom, it makes it very easy to uh, to uh, get all the water out of your out of your barrel. But you got to put on something. Uh, you got to put on some concrete blocks. Uh, remember, these barrels are going to be heavy. Uh, a full barrel weighs over 400 pounds, so uh, you definitely want to make sure that foundation is nice and sturdy. Uh, you want to be concerned about erosion. Uh, you can get erosion occurring, uh, you get too close to the foundation, and you want to have it close to a downspout. Uh, you've got to have to make these work really well. You need to have some place on your house to, uh, to collect that, uh, that rainwater. So uh, uh, either a gutter or I'll show you in a minute how you can also use a valley on your on your house, but someplace that concentrates that, uh, that water. Uh, you want to put down some gravel to help uh, prevent erosion and provide a nice sturdy base for those concrete blocks. Um, I, I, you don't need to have three blocks high as you saw on that other one, but just put enough concrete blocks under there that you can get your bucket or your uh, uh, or your watering can under the uh, under the spigot. You can see here's my neighbor's, uh, one that I made for him. Uh, you see how uh, he's put on just one layer of uh, concrete blocks. He put a uh, stainless steel chain as a guide to bring the water into his, uh, into his rain barrel. Looks beautiful, but he has a difficult time because he can't get his uh, screen wire on there to protect against the uh, uh, mosquitoes getting in the, uh, in the rain barrel and, uh, and raising baby mosquitoes. So I don't recommend that you leave the top open like he's done, but that is an option. Uh, way I did it, and most people do it, is you uh, you remove a, a section of your downspout, you reconfigure it to go over to the top of your barrel, and uh, and and uh, put it in place, and it will right guide the rainwater directly into the uh, into the top of your barrel. Uh, you might use something like this, a diverter that you can buy at um, uh, at any hardware store. They're very inexpensive, just to guide that water over into your barrel. Uh, the other option we talked about a little bit earlier is being able to put under a downspout, excuse me, under a valley. Uh, you can see in this image I have uh, I've put it under a valley. Water runs off the valley, fills it very quickly. I was sitting in my neighbor's, uh, my neighbor's pool the other day when it was raining and I watched the barrel fill up in just a few minutes. Uh, one of the interesting things about, uh, about how much rain we get in Florida and about how quickly these barrels can be filled up uh, about a quarter of an inch of rain will completely fill my rain barrel in just a very few minutes. So it, um, it's, it's an amazing amount of how much rain comes off the roof of a house. The, uh, one of the people that I, I borrowed material from for this uh, was concerned about safety. That's another reason for having that screen wire on top of the barrel is, uh, is safety. Gets the, um, keeps children and pets out of the, out of the rain barrel. Uh, And if you don't have that screen wire on there, you do need to do something like uh, uh, one of the biological controls. This is dunk. Uh, it's a biologic chemical that you add to your, break it up, those round things up and put them in your, in your uh, rain barrel and it prevents the mosquitoes from becoming adults. So eggs can still be laid in there, but the, uh, those, the larvae never grow to be adult mosquitoes. Just some other things you might do. Uh, some people like to do 
uh, different modifications. Uh, some people like to have overflows. Um, this one here uh, takes some of the water off to another location. Uh, the blue, uh, blue tubing runs off to someplace else in the garden. Uh, you see the garden hose down at the bottom. Uh, so lots and lots of different options that you have. You see the red barrel on the right has the uh, spigot up higher than I would normally have it because you're just wasting the storage of water. And it does have that overflow valve. Um, I've never seen that to be particularly of any, uh, of any value. I just have the water run on the top of my barrel and down to the gravel. You can uh, put multiple barrels together. So if 55 gallons is not enough for you, you can put uh, three or four or five of them together, whatever you want. Uh, you see how they're, they're set up here uh, on, on the different heights of blocks. These are uh, these fill from the top. And I don't like this particular configuration uh, because you have to have then have three valves and you have to move your your hose or your uh, or your bucket from from barrel to barrel to uh, to uh, to get the water. I think a better design is to connect the two rain barrels together at the bottom. This allows the uh, the water to uh, to fill both barrels up at the same time, um, and you only have to have a a, a single spigot to uh, to drain the water out. This guy also put in a uh, a clear gauge to be able to tell how much water he has in his barrels. Uh, Kind of a neat, neat idea. It's not something I do, but something you might consider. You do lots of different things with these uh, with these barrels to make them uh, more useful for uh, for you. And just other things that you can do. Uh, this person uh, put an overflow valve on the side of their tank and then uh, sets a, a bucket underneath it, the spigot to excuse me overflow valve to let water flow into it. So another option you could do to gain more water. Here's the rain barrel at my house. You can see I just have a, a couple of concrete blocks underneath it to make it high enough to fit over the uh, over the bucket that you collect the water in. Um, you can see how I modified my downspout to direct the water directly into the into the top of the barrel. Uh, this one's been in place for 15 years at least. Still works great. Uh, does a great job of collecting uh, collecting water and storing it for me for when I need it. Here's just a close-up of uh, the top of the rain barrel. You can see how the uh, screen wire is held on with the with the ring on uh, on this type of uh, on this type of rain barrel. One thing that's, uh, that's important is to remember to rinse the rain barrel uh, when you first get it, just to ensure there's any chemicals left in it. Um, you get it rinsed out. Uh, you don't want to buy a barrel that has uh, some type of, uh, of highly toxic chemical in it, but they all had something in them. And uh, so rinse them out uh, before you use them. And uh, about once every two or three years, uh, before the season starts, before the rainy season starts, I go out and drain my barrel completely down and use that water on the, in the garden. And then I take and scrub the barrel out. You don't have to do that, but I just like to keep it, uh, keep the algae from building up on the, on the inside of it. So it doesn't take more than just a few minutes to do. All right, so now you're, you're done with it. You got your barrel set up. What's next? I'm going to talk about how do you get creative? How can I make this uh, this barrel more attractive if you want? Again, I'm not big into that, but I know a lot of my friends are. So lots of things you can do. You can paint them in all sorts of different ways. Here's some more, even yet more creativity. Make stencils and, and paint them. Uh, you need to get some type of a, um, a paint that will work on plastic. Just some more pictures of uh, more designs to show you how fancy you can, you can get with it. All right, so we've we finished with uh, with rain barrels, and if you get excited about rain barrels, I do presentations on on rain gardens, another way for rainwater harvesting. Um, I have an entire presentation that talks about how you design these and lay them out. The idea here is to take that water which might otherwise run off your yard and collect it into uh, to a low area, depressed area in your in your yard, and um, and use that to raise plants, gardens. Uh, you can use plants that are here on the west side of the county where we have a lot of high uh, droughty areas without a lot of moisture. Uh, you can plant plants that need more water in, their, in your rain garden, and they'll do very, very well because you get all that rain coming off your, off your house, being put into a naturally occurring low area in your, in your yard. Or as I've done, I've actually dug a, dug a, a, a basin out in my yard to make a, a place to catch the rainwater coming off from one of my, uh, one of my gutters. If you, and if you really want to get serious about this, you can look at, um, at harvesting rainwater with a cistern. 
Um, cisterns are, uh, are the big brothers of rain barrels. Uh, this one's about 800 gallons here. Um, if you really wanted to never have to use drinking water for watering your yard, uh, you would want to get something more along the lines of a 1500 gallon uh, uh, tank. Uh, install it and it, uh, it should work, uh, work well to uh, store that water and you'd have it then available for uh, any time you might need water for watering your yard. You might have to include a small pump in this just to pressurize that, uh, that system. Depends on how you're going to use the, uh, use the water. But uh, I have a presentation on uh, cisterns as well. So if you should be interested in that, we can always schedule a program at another time. We're talking about the details of designing and installing cisterns. So one question I get asked every time I do this presentation is collecting rainwater legal. The answer to that question is yes. There are no prohibitions in the state on collecting rainwater. As a matter of fact, the state even has a program where you, uh, if you happen to connect your uh, house to central sewer and you have a septic tank left over, you can actually convert that septic tank into a, uh, into a cistern. That's provided for by state law. Uh, I did check with um, all the, uh, the cities on the west side of the county and a few on the east side asking if they had any prohibitions on rain barrels. They do not. Um, you might have to get a permit, but they're not prohibited. And, uh, and most of the places that, uh, that I talked to actually had programs to, uh, to give away coupons for, for rain barrels. Uh, one of the cities on the east, east side of Lish County actually bought uh, 12 rain barrels for me to give away a couple of years ago. So uh, yes, legal, but you might have to get a permit. The Friends of Lyon Environmental Center has both 55-gallon uh, and 30-gallon rain barrels for sale. Uh, the 55-gallon ones are $50. The 30-gallon ones are $30. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing one of these rain barrels, uh, simply send me an, an email at uh, stephenkettner at gmail.com, and I'll send you a link. Supplies are always limited. These things sell quickly. Uh, once we run out, we'll put you on a waiting list until I get some more uh, rain barrels made up. If you want more information, uh, Green Volusia is a great source of information about water, looking at, uh, at, at pollution and things we can do to reduce pollution. Uh, St. John's River Water Management District, I work with on a lot of programming, uh, is, is a great source. I've given you a link to their newsroom, and you'll see all the different presentations that, uh, that they do. And my, uh, I do have a page about cisterns set up at the Blue Spring Alliance page, uh, and you'll see that uh, below. And of course, you can always email me for, uh, for more information. I'll try to answer your questions and I'll get you links to more detailed information should you, uh, should you want it. So now that you have the knowledge, go forth and harvest rainwater. If you have any more questions, uh, we'll be able to hang around here for a little bit to, to answer those questions. Or you can always email me at stephenkettner at gmail.com. Uh, if you'd like to be added to the West Lush Audubon uh, mailing list, you can also let me know at that same email address, and I'll put you on there to uh, let you know about uh, all the different things that West Lush Audubon is doing to protect, uh, to protect the environment. Thank you all very much. Hopefully, we'll see you again on another presentation.